before we begin, there's a couple requirements we're going to have to have. A, we're going to need a server. So grab a Windows 2012 R2 server. If you don't have 2012 in your environment, we do support installing Smart Imager on a 2008 R2 server. However, 2008 is getting a little long in the tooth and you won't be able to take advantage of some of the features of 2012. So we highly recommend you use a 2012 R2 server. The server can be virtual. In fact, we recommend that it is. If you install it on a virtual server, just throw two processors at it and four gig of RAM or so, and it should be running nicely. Now, you're going to need two accounts. You're going to need your personal account, and you're also going to need a system account. The system account needs to have a password that doesn't expire. Both accounts need to be AD authenticated. Also, by default, Smart Imager is going to install SQL Server Express. You don't have to install SQL Server Express and you don't have to use SQL Server Express if you want to use a SQL instance that's off box. If you use a SQL instance that's off box that you want Smart Imager to connect to, you're going to need a SQL account like an SA account or an account that can grant your system account privileges to the Smart Imager database. All right, with the requirements taken care of, let's go ahead and get started here. And as you can see, I have a 2012 R2 server already lined up, and I've copied the binary to my desktop, and I'm going to go ahead and click Install and say yes to the user account control. The first thing that's going to come up is the prerequisites wizard. The prerequisites wizard is going to be those items you need in order to install Smart Imager properly. So go ahead and click Next here. And in my case, the only thing I need on this server is going to be SQL Express. Again, if I wanted to use SQL Offbox, I can uncheck that box here. However, for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and install SQL Server Express there are two or three other items that may be checked in your environment as well. For instance, .NET 3 and .NET 452, the latter which takes a reboot will be needed to use Smart Imager. Keep in mind that reboot is going to be a soft reboot where it comes back up and the installation is going to continue automatically for you. Also, you'll notice that the ADK is uh, required as well. The ADK in my case is already installed and I know I have the latest and greatest ADK. However, if you don't know if you do have the latest ADK, uninstall the ADK that's installed on your server and just let Smart Imager download it and install it for you. You definitely want to be running the latest and greatest ADK because Microsoft will prepackage some drivers into WinPE that will really ease the deployment process once you get to that point. All right, I am uh, going to go ahead and stop the video here and push pause because I'm sure you don't want to watch my computer download and install the prerequisites. I'm going to continue this video after I install and get all those prerequisites lined up. Just so you know, the prerequisites download on the ADK itself is going to be about 5 to 10 minutes depending on your bandwidth. It's a 3.5 gigabyte install and it is required to use Smart Imager. The installation of the ADK is also quite long. It takes at least 15 minutes to install it. And on top of that, you may have some .NET framework to install as well as SQL. So take your time, let the installer go through the prerequisites, and I'm going to do the same thing on my server and we'll resume as soon as I'm complete. All right, our prerequisites are installed and we're ready to continue in the installation of Smart Imager. The good news is most of the work is done. By far, the prerequisites take a much longer time than the rest of the installation. So let's go ahead and continue here. I'm now at my Smart Imager setup wizard. And from here, I'll just go ahead and click Next which I'm brought to the EULA or the license agreement. Go ahead and accept the license agreement after you read it and click Next. And you're brought to where you can choose to install Smart Imager. 
Now, in a production environment, you may choose to install Smart Imager on a partition that's not where the operating system resides. Good idea. In this case, this is just a lab server for me, so I'm going to leave it as the default. And I also have the choice to install the Ultra VNC Client Controller. This will allow me to remote control any machine as I'm imaging it, even before Windows is installed on it. A great feature to have, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that to install and click Next. Now I choose how I want to connect to SQL. I can either choose to use the locally installed SQL Express or I can choose to connect to a SQL instance that's off box. In my case, I'm gonna use SQL Express. However, if you uncheck this, you are required to put in the server name as well as the port you'll be using to connect to. The credentials here that it's asking for are not your service account credentials. These credentials that it needs here are going to be your SQL credentials. So it's going to be that SA account or it's going to be that SQL account that has the rights to grant access to the service account to the Smart Imager database. All right, I'm going to choose SQL Express here and click Next. Now I'm asked for the credentials of my service account. Once again, I, I can't stress enough that that SQL box here on the prior screen, this one is asking for credentials from SQL. So these have to be SQL authenticated credentials, whereas the very next one is asking for your service account or your AD account credentials for that service account where the password does not expire. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my credentials here and give it a password. Again, this account needs to have admin rights to the Smart Imager server. And when I click Next, it's going to test that and make sure that it is an admin. It's also going to test to make sure it has access to the, to the Smart Imager database. All right, I'm ready to install, so I'll click Install. There's a few things that Smart Imager is going to configure at this point. It's going to configure WDS and IIS for you. It's going to make the Smart Imager application pool in IIS for you as well. All right, additionally, if you chose the Ultra VNC client controller, you'll notice that there's a little box down here because the Ultra VNC installation is actually a separate installation than Smart Imager. So if you see a little flashing box down here, go ahead and click it. This is the installation portion for the, for the VNC bundle. I'm going to go ahead and click Next here. I'm going to accept the agreement for the UVNC bundle and click Next and Install. Installing Ultra VNC really doesn't take a whole lot of time, and if you decide not to install it when you install Smart Imager, you can always install it at a later point in time. Once that's finished, I'll go ahead and click Finish, and then my Smart Imager installation will go ahead and finish as well. Only one last piece is left, and that is um, licensing Smart Imager. So I'll go ahead and click Finish, and my licensing um, uh, piece is brought up for me. If I click register, it's going to ask me for my license key. Here's where I'm going to put in my key that I was given when I registered Smart Imager for the first time. Now, if you're using a trial version, you were given a trial key when you registered at the Smart Imager website. Use that key and continue to use that key even when you upgrade to a paid version. Your key is never going to change. All of that is handled on the back end. Well, that's it for installing Smart Imager. Please feel free to hit us up at contact us at smartimager.com. And if you ever need any support whatsoever, please feel free to hit us up at support at smartimager.com.